right. I think we're waiting for me, huh? Yep. Awesome. Let's uh, call to order the March 8th uh, Town of Hamden Planning Board meeting at 6.02. Apologize, I'm late. Um, so I think we're, we're uh, having interviews uh, for the master plan. Uh, Tracy Adamski, good to see you. Uh, Sharon, I'm Jason Barroso, nice to meet you. Um, I think, uh, I mean, when I've done interviews in the past, I've just basically had the, um, not applicants, but the uh, interviewees start with a general opening statement and then questions from the board and then closing statement. So I don't know if you guys want the floor and tell us a little bit about time bond and what you have in mind for the master plan. I guess I'll start and do a quick introduction and then turn it over to Sharon um, as she would be the, the lead on this project. So my name is Tracy Adamski. I'm um, a certified planner and a vice president at Ty and Bond. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm local here um, out of our Westfield office. Um, I've been doing some variety of planning work for over 25 years now. So. Uh, a lot of the work that I tend to do is more on the land use um, and environmental uh, side um, and have done like a number of open space plans working with communities, have also work in, worked with um, communities doing similar plans to yours, comprehensive plans, and uh, worked with others, uh, you know, as we work through the various uh, elements of, of comprehensive plans. Sharon um, has uh, experience doing the, the totality of uh, comprehensive plans, and she would be the project manager. I would be the project director, so I'd be responsible for reviewing things, um, for making sure we have staffing available, and to be available for any questions that you guys may have, and you know, to come in for any meetings you know, that, that you may need us for as well. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sharon. Hi everyone, and yes, I'm Sharon Rooney. I'm principal planner with Tie and Bond, and I'm based in our Cape Cod office, uh, a couple hours away from here. And uh, as Tracy, I'm also a certified planner in Massachusetts, and um, also a registered landscape architect. Um, I've been doing uh, planning work for over 30 years now, both in the public sector and, and the private sector, um, working on regional and local plans. I've worked on. I'm working currently on a number of comprehensive plans um, on the Cape and have worked on master plans, site planning work, um, both related to planning and, and landscape architecture. Um, I've uh, also, uh, in my public practice, uh, which was a considerable amount of my career, I did help to develop um, some streamlined regulations for developing comprehensive plans on Cape Cod and I brought that um, sort of knowledge and experience into my work with Ty and Bond to develop um, what we're proposing is a streamlined approach to completing your master plan. That also meets the, the mass general law requirements at the same time um, and recognizing some of the impacts from and future impacts from climate change issues, current issues uh, to bring your plan you know, um, both into compliance with the state law as well as integrating other plans that you've either completed or are currently completing. Yes. Okay. Um, You've got these, but do you want to just yeah, sure. go person to person yeah, sure. and then, because mm -hmm. I think it's going to be kind of organic in that responses. Mm -hmm. yep. So I don't know if we want to start with, Patrick, do you want to start with interview questions? Sure. Do you think? Sure. I think uh, one of the questions we have here is, I'll say generally about uh, data collection in the public involvement process and how do you foresee that rolling out across, you know, a small community like Hamden? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts you have on that? Sure. Well, um, public outreach is, I'll start with that. It's always, always a challenge, and no matter what size the community, um, you know, and, and um, you know, certainly your, your, I'm sure your community is no exception. It's always challenging to get people engaged in the process. Uh, we've used and are using a number of different techniques, and they're happy to work with you to develop the most appropriate ones for your community. Anything from, uh, and I know you, you would like to do a, an online survey as part of this process. That's, that's one, certainly one of the techniques. Um, we've used both you know, virtual techniques as well as in-person meetings, workshops, 
um, we have proposed at least one hands-on workshop um, you know with with the community I like to use um, resource maps so I like to use um, GIS maps and, and resource maps and photographs of of your community to to um, kind of help people identify with you know where they are in the world you know in in town and get them engaged um, and so I've done a number of uh, workshops that are very hands-on and interactive uh, with the community. But like I said, we can tailor um, what you would like to do to your specific needs if you, you know, want or need to do something virtually or a combination uh, of both. Um, we can certainly do that. Um, as far as data collection, things like demographics and other data like that, we'll be using uh, US Census data um, and or regional data as well as your assessor's data. Um, you know, if there's good regional data through your regional planning agency available, we'll certainly contact them and, and use that data. I know you have a great RPA out here, so, um, you know, we would definitely be in touch with them for any um, regional and or local data that's available and that could be integrated into the planning process. So one of the things that we've talked about is you know, what level of involvement does the, I'll say the town staff need to provide mm -hmm. and what kind of support would be expected from them? Well, it definitely there would need to be some support. Um, so we have, you know, made our proposal based on, we understand that you have, you know, a planning grant and we have, you know, geared our proposal to, to the limits of that grant, if you will. Um, and I've always worked in close coordination. I think it's worked best when there is um, a, at least a point of contact within the community to, um, to coordinate with and get, you know, if there's information that's needed or to communicate with other, um, you know, other committees and other staff in the town. It's good to have, um, it works best if there's a, at least a point person in the town. Um, so we do see this as a shared, um, a shared approach. Um, that being said, in terms of things like the writing, um, the, the bulk of sort of the, the writing is in uh, what I'll call existing conditions, inventories, and analysis. So that's where you get into, you know, looking at the data about trends, you know, what's changed in the town, and then um, fleshing out what are some of the most important issues and needs of, of your town. And we'll be doing the bulk of that writing, but we will need to um, coordinate back with town staff and and your board and any other committees in in town that um, need to review or should should be included. That's another form of outreach, I think, too. Yeah, I think it's back to your committees. I think we're um, we're looking at having a master plan committee actually put together of various oh, members. Um, oh, so great. I'd imagine okay. point of contact would either be the chair of the master plan committee or, I mean. The, the last time I was involved in one, it was the town town administrator, you know, as a full time employee. But basically, it would all go through the master plan committee. And we would use that master plan committee. So, you know, to um, as Sharon noted, you know, about the workshops. The key thing about the workshop is actually getting people to come to them, right. you know, and you know, we can design them to be engaging, but nobody's going to know that if they don't show up. Um, you know, we're working in Edvermont right now, which is a small community, and I have a public workshop coming up this um, this weekend. The one that we had previous, we had like over 100 people come, and they they um, sent out a robocall beforehand. They were at the transfer station, you know, hand, handing things out. So this was all committee-based. So the committee really worked on getting the word out. And that showed in the attendance that we had. So, you know, we can provide you with materials, but we would be looking for that master plan committee to kind of take ownership of getting the word out. And, you know, talk, you know, if there are um, people who are on different committees that, you know, they talk it up to their committees, you know, use, use the networks that, you know, the folks that you are on the committee and the folks that you know, and, you know, if you know like where the meeting place is, have people, you know, available there to, to talk it up. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because I'm working in the town of Truro, a very small community in the Outer Cape. And in the committee in that case was very instrumental in helping to get the word out about a, a community visioning workshop. 
Um, that was in person. So, you know, knowing that there's been challenges because of COVID with having in-person workshops, people were really anxious to do that. And the committee um, really did help in getting the word out. And like you're saying, boots on the ground, signs here. And, you know, sometimes that's what it takes um, is, you know, just literally putting, you know, putting little signs up and, and things like that in a small community, especially, and people in talking to your the various committees, you know, announcing at their meetings that um, a workshop's being held right. and that, that kind of thing, so. And um, supposing we have this committee and there's maybe 10, 12 people, if we're lucky, maybe, yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many we invited yeah. or we asked? How many? Okay, so those are the departments, and then we want some actual right, community meetings. So maybe 15 people. What else, other than this outreach, would be their specific responsibilities? Because if we want to encourage people to do this, we need to be able to say to them, this is what your role is going mm -hmm. to be. Well, certainly running the, the meetings, you mm -hmm. know, uh, running and participating in the meetings, reviewing draft materials, so draft mm -hmm. documents, um, having input on developing the vision and the goals for the master plan. Um, and you know, as you mentioned earlier, having a, a point of contact, you know, a key point, a liaison, if you will, um, that's, you know, with one or more members. Uh, sometimes committees, especially if it's that large, might form subcommittees to focus on specific issues. Um, that's worked really well. And so, you know, they may have roles on subcommittees as well on specific topics of interest to them. Um, so no gathering of actual data. That's, you know, I'm. I'm well, I'm, <laughs> I've, I've done I, both. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. my, my fear is that the steering committee would end up having lots of responsibility to gather all this minute data. Maybe minute's not the right word. Um, and and that would be somewhat of a burden on them, you know, if, especially if they do other things other than this. Right. Like work. We, we can identify like roles and responsibilities for people who are interested in the committee. And but you know, to Sharon's point, typically we're not looking at the committee to be the ones gathering the data. Yeah, they, they may tell us like this is out there. Okay. Um, right. You All know, right. and then it would be on us or they could tell us who we could contact for that information if there's things that we're not aware okay. of. That would be um, helpful. Okay. But generally it's we're consultants, you know, so so we come in with, um, you know, experience in what's worked here, what's worked there, right. you know, dif different ways of, of seeing things. But at the end of the day, it's still your plan. And what we're looking for from the steering committee is to kind of provide that mm -hmm. feedback so that we're meeting your needs. You know, what are the key issues? You know, we're going to hear some of that through the survey. We're going to hear some of that through the public workshop, but we're going to look for that steering committee to help us kind of sift through and make sure like we stay on track. Okay. All right, great. They, they could also provide some input into the survey questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We'd prefer to, to sort of organize the design of it and keep it limited, but to have some, in, you know, initial input into that would be helpful. Okay. Just, you know, you're certainly, your client bond is certainly familiar with Hamden, of course. And, you know, how do you leverage that knowledge in any way when you do your work? Do you look to other people in your firm who have a lot of experience here to kind of get definitely. insights that might not otherwise be there? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we have a fair understanding of infrastructure here. Yep. Um, you know, so that's something that will, you know, pull on um, our internal knowledge right. to kind of help with that. Okay. And do you, um, when you do projects like this, do you um, give uh, the town suggestions on where they might get grant money for any proposals that we might be interested in following up on? So you have access to that kind of a network? Okay. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. I've worked on a number of, of grants. Um, I know you've, you do have the, uh, the MVP um, summary of findings, and, but there's going to be an MVP round two. So I think they're going to be bringing, you know, requesting that communities kind of either go through a new process or some sort of way to update that plan. That's one example. I've worked on MVP action. Uh, so MVP is Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness. 
uh, through the Commonwealth. Um, they have action grants for communities that have completed the planning process. Um, that's one one example. I've worked on a and number an of action grants. grant would be an action grant would be a grant to implement one of the visions that comes out of the master plan. I'm assuming. Sure, and then okay. there are other grant programs. I've worked on hazard mitigation. Um, you know, Tracy's is familiar with with those as well. There are other there are other types of grants though too that are offered through the state and federal. But you know, state state grants are a little bit easier to obtain. But there could, they could be for economic development or for housing or for yep. um, you know specific issues that require um, some additional funding to support them. Um, so what specifically would be the, the role of the planning board? So this board um, through this process? Well, you, um, you'll be uh, reviewing and conducting a hearing, I believe, uh, depending on your, you know, town government, if you're bringing this to town meeting ultimately. Um, yeah, you know, we also mm -hmm. have playing a role there, if that, if that is. I did a, last time, last time I did one, that, that was the process. I don't think it's written down anywhere that it has to be, but it seems, um, would seem it's fairly it's necessary. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it would seem fairly necessary to bring it to town, to bring the plan to town meeting, and yeah. that would be the planning board. That wouldn't be the master plan committee. Okay. Um, so also, also for your input on on zoning issues and land use issues, certainly yeah. you you know, you currently play a role in, in that in, in the town, an important role. So um, we'd be looking to you know your input for your input on um, on those issues as well. With what are some of the current zoning issues and problems, um, land use concerns as well. And uh, do you have written in your schedule uh, specific meetings with us, or is this just going to be ad hoc as the need arises? Well, um, again, our you know our our current scope is is fairly limited due to the due to the budget. Um, but so we would probably be relying to some degree on on the committee to. Um, to meet with you and you know and share with you and share back with us okay. you through that mechanism um, you know again if um, if we're able to we certainly you know could build that in uh, I've definitely done that okay, so you see that the, you see the communication to us coming through our steering committee okay primarily mm -hmm. okay all right and um, what was the other thing that can you can you just give us uh, a couple of examples of incorporating energy and climate themes into small towns like this. Um, you want to start, or do you like me to? Okay, okay. I mean, just a quick, <laughs> I, just a I real quick. I have a couple. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Well, I'm currently working with uh, again town of Truro, uh, oh, Truro and Brewster um, and Sandwich, and so on on the Cape. Um, all three of those communities have participated in the uh, MVP program, as I mentioned, and. All three also have hazard mitigation plans, which I believe you're, you do too, as well. So what we do is we look at those in, in, when, in the very beginning when we're reviewing planning doc, related planning documents, and there are um, you know there are actions and recommendations in those plans that can be um, incorporated um, into the into the master plan as well. Also, can you give the, me an example. Um, oh, uh, identification of uh, the hazard mitigation plan identifies vulnerable facilities and infrastructure and comes okay. up with recommended um, mitigation strategies. Okay. Um, and a lot of times there's overlap between that and the company of uh, the master plan because that also has an infrastructure component to it. So it could be, it'll be built into the analysis of some of your vulnerabilities okay. um, in your existing conditions, and then it could be woven into recommendations or okay. actions. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anything particular you do to tailor your work to a town that has less than 5,000 people? <laughs> Every master plan I work on is different. <laughs> so I'd say every single one is tailored to the community. Just to, to that specific community. There's nothing that you, you know, look at in particular when you're looking at a really small town like this. Well, I think small towns have, have some unique issues, you know, um, and, you know, 
one of them could be, well, you know, you're a small town, rural in nature, or, you know, have uh, great open space and, and those, um, those amenities, you know, how, how do you keep them? You know, how do you keep the character of the community that you value so much? Um, and those are, that's one unique thing, I think, about working with s smaller communities. Um, that's a challenge and an opportunity, you know. Um, you know, I live and work in an area that has have a lot of small communities, so, um, you know, they cherish what they have, and it's important to keep that, so. Okay. Great. I don't know about you, Tracy, but. Yeah, no, I, I would agree, and I think it starts with, you know, identifying what your vision is for the for Camden. You know, if it's, you want to keep it the way it is, you love the character, you know, that's where we start with. If there's a desire for more economic development, then, you know, that's something we incorporate. So it's part of the give and take of, you know, what are the issues that Camden feels is, you know, the strongest that needs to be, you know, looked at, identified, you know, as, as, as Sharon had mentioned, you know, what are the things that you really want to preserve and what are things you want to change? So it, it is really tailored to what Hamden's needs are. Okay. And as far as uh, in-person versus Zoom goes, what are your expectations for what percentage will be done in person and what will not as far as meetings? We don't have a, a breakdown of, of in-person versus virtual, but I believe that we proposed that the committee meetings would be virtual with um, a couple of exceptions. I'm sorry, do we have it in our follow-up letter? Definitely, um, definitely the workshop is something that's in yes. person. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, we would have um, an in-person community workshop and in-person um, steering committee meeting during development of the vision and goals. Mm -hmm. So we've proposed, you know, two there. And then I believe um, uh, up to four virtual meetings um, during development of the plan. With the steering committee? With the steering mm -hmm. committee. And then one in-person community meeting and one in-person meeting, well, I'm sorry, with the planning planning board to adopt the final master plan, mm -hmm. so we do come back to you. Um, and again, we can, um, you know, work with you on sort of, you know, modifying that a little bit to meet your needs. Um, that was going to be my next question. Would you be willing to give us a, a little more in-person time? Um, rather than virtual with yeah, I think, I think the, concern, the concern we talked mm -hmm. about at mm -hmm. one of our meetings was mm -hmm. having somebody from the consultant here during because the folks that go on a master plan committee nobody's going to have nobody's going to have done this before so mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's probably going to be fairly critical to have somebody who's done this before kind of help the steering committee or the master plan committee you know find its footing and mm -hmm. know where to go um, I think that's a question we're going to be asking of, of everybody is would you be willing to put one, uh, put someone here for each of the master plan committee meetings? Um, how, how often do you anticipate that they'll be meeting? I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. well, so weird. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 when the only time I was involved in a master plan, it was for a larger uh, town and it was I think monthly meetings uh, and I want to say we had 12 or 18 of them but I mean that's for a town five times the size I don't know what yeah what's no what this what kind of scope is is involved for a 5,000 person yeah well I think it, it's budget based yep. you know so this is a pretty limited budget um, and the, and the scope was developed around that. Yep. So we had a limited number of meetings. Um, that being said, you know, I can help with the in-person yep. um, coordination. I'm working right now where um, in, in Egremont, we've done a combination. Mm -hmm. So I've had some in-person and some via Zoom. Yep. Um, and I'll say it, it's gone well to, to do it, you know, kind of every other you yep. know, meeting to, to have um, it in different formats. Yep. Um, but we could, you know, definitely provide that guidance. Yep. And there's also like homework we could provide to the committee that if we're not here, you know, if they want to meet more often, there may be things we can say like, 
here's your homework, here's things you can do if you want to meet without, you know, the consultant team. And, and we do this with other, you know, mm -hmm. communities as well, where, you know, we're here to provide certain guidance at certain key points, and then the committees can go on and do other activities, you know, other meetings without us, but guided by, you know, with direction from yeah. us. And I've been doing that in the town of Sandwich currently, so we had a limited budget there, and um, so the, the committee has met without without my assistance, assistance, but with the town planner. And again, as Tracy said, giving them guidance as to sort of, you know, what's their homework or what could they be working on. And and that approach has worked, has worked pretty well in that case as well. Um, we could consider maybe a hybrid approach as well, um, since I'm at a, a fair distance. You know, once we get the committee up and running and they're right. comfortable, you know, working with us, um, perhaps we could do something that's a bit of a hybrid approach where I could participate remotely, you know, while the committee is in person, yep. um, if, if they're comfortable with that or once they get comfortable. Okay. I, I think the um, follow-up to that would be, could you, how, how long would it take to revise? Because obviously you tailored this response to the grant um, right. funding. Um, so if if there was a... So we're asking for folks to be here. Um, we're asking for the consultants to be here during the meeting. Should we just think it out loud mm -hmm. here? Should we be asking them to provide a revised uh, price and not necessarily proposal, but revised price to include X number of meetings with them directing the meeting? Would the you need plan? that? And, and we could turn turn that around. I, I'd like to look at that, look at the numbers. Okay. And, yeah. you know, that's something we can probably turn around within a week. Okay. okay. Yeah, because it's kind of, I mean, we don't really know what it's, we don't have the experience to know what it, what we should, how many meetings we should be planning on having right. with you folks here and with the steering committee, uh, steering committee here, so. Sometimes in the, in the beginning, committees meet a little more often. And then, you know, and then they may take a break, you know, at some point. Understanding that you do with the grant, you need to be done by June 30th, 2024. So, yep. um, you know, even even though it's March, you know, presuming if you, if they started next month, I mean, this is still a doable time frame, I think, as long as yep. the committee is, like, ready to go and and we can work, you know, together to, mm -hmm. you know, get get workshops scheduled and get, you know, um, get that public involvement started. You would know this question. So that the, the grant that we apply, I'm assuming you would know this, <laughs> the answer to this question. Uh, the grant that we applied for, does that require the, the, does that require the master plan to be complete by a certain time frame or the funds spent by a, a certain time frame? I think, well, yeah, I think it's both. Okay. So this was MVP, is that right? The M I this believe was, it was, wasn't it? No. It, no? Mm -hmm. Or was it DHCD? I have to go back and I thought and check. Give me a minute. Okay. Yep. Um, gen generally or typically, like if um, with the you know with the uh, end date of, end of fiscal year, usually like that, they're expecting like the there can't be anything billed after that date. Right. But they're also expecting a, a finished product. Okay. If they're you know I th I think if there were extenuating circumstances, for example. I mean, that isn't yeah, typically my, my when you would have town was, meeting. Yeah, right? my yeah. question was basically, my question was along the lines of if we're looking at a $100,000 master plan, is the concern with the grant that we spend the 75000 or that we have 100? DHCD. DHCD, okay. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. working with another community on. Yeah, on so that was my yeah. question is if it's, you know, if we end up putting a budget of 100000 on this because we want more in our master plan, how does that? If you know how that oh, works with the grant. Oh, you mean like do you have to spend down the grant money? I mean, if we're the for 75% done and we spend down the grant money and we still got 25% left that we're paying for ourselves, does that meet the uh, criteria of it the grant? It probably would, but it would be best to, to um, you know, for them. your staff person to, to contact DHCD okay. about that as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so that they typically are, you know, looking for, um, you know, monthly monthly billings you know monthly invoices um and and it has to be during the same fiscal year so they are pretty sticklers about um you, you know you can't be submitting an invoice for a previous year right, or right, yeah right. something yeah like that, that makes sense yeah um 
And who would be the point person for us? One of you? You would. Uh, you myself, would. yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. So I, I, think I, that, I think that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? So just to be clear, you would like us to update our um, the the letter, the pricing letter, to, yeah, reflect, to reflect the, the term, in the person, time frames, yeah, in person. In person mm -hmm. um, you know, one staff person here to kind of sure. help the steering committee committee along, at least at the beginning. I mean, I, I I could see from my previous experience, I could see how a hybrid approach would work at times when you're just mm -hmm. reviewing sections that have been drafted already because yeah. mm -hmm. um, basically, basically what happens is chapters of this master plan will get drafted and then it gets presented to right. the steering committee and the steering committee has to basically discuss what they right you know uh, basically the whole meeting is reviewing that you know reviewing and discussing those chapters so I could see how that could be done hybrid but I think at the beginning it's definitely the beginning to get them started with developing and visions yeah. and stuff like that I think they're gonna exactly. yeah. it's gonna really require somebody in the room um, and then I had a couple, uh, I had a couple quick questions, uh, related to data collection. Um, and I had a, a, a question on differing opinions and I'm drawn on my previous experience. Um, it seemed like on my previous experience, different consultants seemed like the consultant had a vision and was pushing that on the town, um, met with substantial resistance, but it seemed like the consultant was kind of pushing their vision. Is that, I mean, how does that fit with your style of developing a master plan? It sounds like it doesn't, but. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know if you can see it from my, my um, I, I mean, it's it's your plan. At the, at the, it's, it's Hamden's plan. So right. while, you know, we can, in my opinion, you know, our role as consultants is to kind of help guide you through the process, you know, to get the words on the paper, to do the data collection and, and provide that. But, you know, what we are trying to do is get the information from the steering committee, from the workshops, from the surveys that feeds into that vision. Yep. But it's your vision at the end of the day. So, you know, that should be guided by you will will help you with the words yep. but you know the, the intent is that it's something that you know for the most part there's always going to be people with different right. opinions but you know we're, we're capturing the general vision of the community from the community and then i'm picking up on something i think i'm picking up on a reaction that you had to online surveys how do you feel about online surveys for <laughs> data collection oh um i don't i don't have any problem with them i just um just um urge urge you to uh or the committee to keep them brief um i have have worked on uh some community surveys where um everyone wanted to have you know a particular question and what started with a 15 question survey ended up being 90 oh. and at that point you know you have yeah. survey fatigue people you know can't participate in something yeah. that long yeah. so um just a just a word of caution about yeah. uh, not not that there you know i have no problem with with surveys <laughs> themselves i think they're a great tool i was going to ask yeah. if you had any concerns with the validity of the responses um, when it comes to online surveys and how, how would you control to uh, is there any are they actually statistically valid? No, they're, you know, they're representative. They're like really a snapshot in time of who, you know, it's like who decides to participate. Right. So you, and you want to try to get as broad, you know. Um, on, uh, on that point, yeah, how, how sure. do you, in the interest of time here, on, on that point, how do you um, make sure that we're capturing citizens of Hamden, residents of Hamden, and not somebody from Wilbraham or Longmeadow or East Longmeadow, who wants to You generally ask us. demographic questions mm -hmm. as okay. part of the right. survey. Assume that they're answering honestly. Okay. Um, but, you know, that, that So you do ask for address and that kind of stuff. Um, or, or are you a resident? Are you a business owner? Yeah. Are you, you know... Yeah, but, but that's the but limit of how you can do that. That's the right. limit. And it's, 
you know, it, it's not um, it's not a scientific survey. Those right. take thousands of dollars right. and several months to prepare. So it's really, um, you know, it's it's one tool in the toolbox. I like to tell communities. Yeah. So it's not the only way to get outreach. Um, it's it's one way. It's a conven it's convenience for those who decide to participate. The workshops, holding visioning workshops, is also a really good way to get input. Um, Posting things on your website, um, you know, phone calls, emails, um, different tools. That, you know, we use a we recommend a variety of tools be used. Is a survey isn't the only the only way to do it, but um, it is it is a good method. Great. All right. Well, um, I don't think we have any more. I don't know if you guys want a closing statement or anything. <laughs> you know. Um, from earlier like we have been in town and you know have done a fair amount of work here and you know are excited about the opportunity to help you guys and you know look into the future and start planning for that so you know we're, we're happy to be at the table here and uh you know with our thank you for your time and yeah. listening to us today and yeah. asking thank your you questions very much. It, was, it was a very good conversation Okay, great. And we'll be happy to get a revised letter to you. Um, I think, you know, within a week would be very easy for us to do. So. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. great. Thank, awesome. you. Thank, great. You well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Are you going back to the Cape tonight? I am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have family in the area. Yeah. 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 Have a safe trip. Very, I grew up in Northampton. So oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Good to see you. Bye. Keeping that ship going straight or what? Straight as the cute. Good to see you. See you, Tracy. Thank nice to meet you, Sharon. Sure. Quickly, I fill them the answers on the question sheet that I now have to use for all the other applicants. <laughs> <laughs> and then you need paper. Do you have paper? I do. All right. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> yeah, I think the next applicant should be coming in, in any minute now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure. It sounded like they were outside. Sounds like the, the choice. We both, we both got glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't then. <laughs> it's, it sounds like the choice of the people on the steering committee is going to be important. Yeah. Very important. <clears throat> How are you, folks? I, wonderful. Sorry, we're running late. My fault, I talk a lot. All right, so um, the way we were doing this, we were allowing the Consultants to do an introductory statement. Uh, mm -hmm. Introductory statement, and we would um, we would then ask questions and then closing statement and then go around. So, the floor is yours if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself uh, or a little bit about your firm and what you have in mind here. Sure, sounds good. Can you guys? Is this working? Yeah, I guess so. Zoom only. Oh, okay. You don't hear it <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, thanks so much for having us. Um, we put together some slides, but it's okay. We, we can skip the slides, I guess. If we, we only have 30 minutes anyways, right? So no, that's no problem. Uh, we are VHB. Um, I'm Luke, this is uh, Julia, and, and yeah, we're based in uh, the headquarters of VHB. Uh, you know, VHB is a sort of mid-size. Could you elaborate where that is? Oh yeah, we're, so we're based in Watertown, Mass. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, 
a relatively sizable company of 2,000 people. We had 30 offices up and down the East Coast. But uh, VHB was, was started in Massachusetts, uh, and that's the biggest market that we serve is Massachusetts. Uh, we have several offices throughout the state. Uh, we have in Boston, Watertown, Springfield. Um, and yeah, we, we work for several state agencies. We work for all sorts of municipal governments across the state. Uh, and you know, we, we have engineers, planners. So, so we're on the, on the planning and urban design team, uh, in Watertown. Um, but really we, we work throughout the state, um, including doing comprehensive plans, you know, in, so in addition to comprehensive plans, we, we do a lot of land use and zoning analysis, uh, advising towns on housing strategy, economic development, things like that. Um, but our comprehensive plan practice um, is something that we always enjoy. We love, you know, it's really the nexus of all these different considerations. Uh, and we've always seen it as a, as a great fit for VHP because we have a lot of disciplines under one roof. So, you know, we, we have people who specialize in just uh, cultural and historic resources, for example. We're able to rely on them for for that specific element of the comprehensive plan process, and they and they, uh, Nicole, who, who's not here tonight, but she she's our, our cultural person. We have a, a transportation planning team, so our colleague Eileen would 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 probably be part of this project if we were to win it, and you know she she does nothing but transportation planning, and she thinks a lot about traffic and transit and and, and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we, we've done some comp plans in Central Mass, uh, including in Palmer, um, which was wrapped up a, a, a year or two ago, I believe. Um, that's right. That's right. It, it won an award for the, for the whole across the state for for an exceptional master plan. Uh, so that that one was a was an interesting one. Uh, we've done uh, comp plans in Westboro, Northboro, Sterling. Um, as well as several others. So yeah. you had a you know, PowerPoint you wanted to share. Is it on a thumb drive or is it on your... I do have it on the thumb drive. Uh, uh, if, drive. Would it work? How do you want to do it? You want to try and do it on a thumb drive or you want to... Um, yeah, if you could just plug this in, if that's easiest. My computer might take a while to boot up. So yeah, if you could if you could advance. Um, so yeah, again, here's more about VHP. Uh, basically, I, I shared a lot of this already, but we serve various markets and we provide uh, various services depending on the context. Um, here's some examples. Uh, some of these I mentioned, um, with 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 Palmer being one that's that's so close by and and one that was really uh, fascinating for us and, and we thought was successful. Uh, you know, we really got out in the community and, and spoke with people and, and, and um, a lot going on there in terms of economic development and housing were the, were the elements that I worked on personally. Um, but some other examples up here, Greenfield, Fairhaven, uh, et cetera. So um, here's some, I mentioned Nicole and Eileen who are at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Donnie is another colleague of ours. He's an environmental uh, planner. He led the uh, the comprehensive plan in Palmer. Uh, um, it's always been great working with Donnie. So so he would really play a a, a role on the sustainability pieces. Um, and then myself and Julia at the top with with Jenny, who's also on our team. Um, so yeah, we, we, you know I think VHB again we're a big company, right? But but we can offer local knowledge and because um, because we work as I mentioned across the state. Uh, diverse, engaging, and innovative outreach skills. Uh, from our perspective, comprehensive plan, you know, we're facilitators. We're, we're not here to sort of uh, 
craft a comprehensive plan and, and present it uh, to the community. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we, we see this uh, as Hampton's comprehensive plan. And our role is to help facilitate a dialogue. We want, we, we, of course, we will provide technical analysis, understand existing conditions, present that in, in public forums. Um, but, but really what we want to do is, is listen to the community, find out what the sort of hot button issues are and, and, and what's going on in town and really focus on the future, come up with a vision and, and, and help to advise on how to, how to achieve that vision. Um, speaking of achieving the vision, we have a, a strong focus, focus on implementation which comes from a lot of the sort of bread and butter services that VHB provides where, you know, we help clients to implement projects uh, across our footprint all the time. So when it comes to the recommendations that might come out of a, sorry, <laughs> that might come out of a comprehensive plan, uh, often what that means for implementation is, well, okay, what's the land use regulatory framework that you have currently? Uh, what is, what's your underlying zoning and what, what sort of development does that, uh, allow or encourage or discourage and, and could it be amended uh, and and things and looking at utilities and, and environmental constraints and things like that as well. Uh, so our project approach is really um, a four step process. Uh, if you go to the next slide, task one is getting started. So really it would, it would begin with that foundational research. Again, we're facilitating a dialogue, but we but we have done this enough times that we're able to provide some uh, some decent technical assistance. So that would really begin with foundational research. We would look at uh, state data resources as well as the you know U.S. Census and federal sources like that. Uh, we'd craft a slide deck which would really summarize a lot of the existing conditions which we feel are relevant uh, to the comprehensive planning process. Put together a baseline profile. Um, Conduct a kickoff and, and community. That, sorry, that, that data collection is done mm -hmm. by VHB folks, or is that subbed out to? Uh, we, yeah, we would do that. Okay. We would do that in, in concert with you as well, and speaking with you and asking right. if there's any local uh, data that you have. Database. That's right, That's and and not only data, but also previous planning exercises. We we, we would take what you've done before. Uh, in terms of, <laughs> be okay, sweet. <laughs> uh, well, that's the, you know whatever. We'll at really least speak to you about that and anything that you, any initiatives that might have come up or whatever, and make sure that we understand that going into it as well. So then, uh, stakeholder sessions are important to us. We if if you could help us to identify who the most sort of relevant stakeholders are in town. That could that we could sit down with for an hour or two and just sort of, um, you know, get a, a a download from them in terms of what's going on. Um, it, for for yep. background, because I don't think I've shared this yet, we're intending on having a master plan steering committee committee made up of various uh, nominees or yep, you know, representatives from various departments, and then yeah. some from the at large community. That's great. We're just starting a comprehensive plan in Pembroke right now, and they've just finished that. It took them it took them a couple months, really. They went they were being very circumspect, uh, and they have people from different civic organizations and town staff, and also just citizens at large who who have a good sort of historical understanding of of, of the community. Uh, so, and that, and that's a really critical part of the of your decision making is who's going to be on the steering committee, uh, and you know typically ranges from six to maybe 12 people, but it's up to you. Um, so we'd sit down with the stakeholders, work with you to form the steering committee, and then develop the public participation plan up front. Um, Julie has had experience with that recently, but, but really it's about, okay, you know, there's gonna be s s touch points with the community throughout the process. Big public workshops, uh, smaller pop-up events where we can maybe attend events that you have on the calendar anyways, fairs, festivals, things at the school. Online and online survey as well. Um, so what we want to do up front is, is craft a document that, that sort of uh, forecasts all of that and share it with you, get your feedback before we get started. Um, so then is the vision and goals, right? So we conducted the first public meeting. Uh, we'd work with, obviously the goal there is to get as big of a crowd as we can get <laughs> so that we can drum up enthusiasm for the process 
and get some initial feedback. And as, as Julie mentioned, the online survey, which is where we can sort of start to chip away at quantifiable input from the community. And then from there, we're going to draft a vision statement, which is going to be our guiding document throughout the process. We want something that is written. Maybe it's a half a page or a page or something like that. But and, and this can take time to really craft it and get it right because everybody's going to have an opinion. Um, but it, but it's an important part of the part. You want to get it right so that later on throughout the process, you can always check back on it and say, how are we doing here? Are we sticking to the game plan about what the vision for the community is? And every community has a very different idea about what their vision is going to be. Some are bold growth. We want jobs. You know, we want to increase, expand the tax base. Others are more, we want to conserve what we have and stay small or, or something like that. Or it's sometimes it's some nuanced version in between those two things. But um, we, all we would want to do is make sure that it's in sync with, with what you guys are interested in. Um, so for task three is the technical analysis. Um, this is where we, we would construct the, the basic elements of the comprehensive plan, which break down here. These don't really change. They're uh, as required by the state when, when you put together a comprehensive plan. Um, so as we mentioned at the, the sort of top of the presentation, there, there's team members that we would have that, that could uh, contribute to each of these. Um, but again, you know, we will be contributing analysis, but it's really about listening to you guys, hearing about what's going on uh, and its needs and goals, right? Those are the two things that are going to structure each of these. If you look back at comprehensive plans from 20 years ago, long reports, 200 pages, 300 pages, big technical appendices, it, not the sort of thing that people want to sit down next to the fireplace and, and open up and read. And they just and a lot of those plans sat there on the shelf and didn't have a, a major impact. We have really been moving away from those. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving. <laughs> so, so, so we've been moving moving away from that. We think that you can still have a really impactful message with fewer words and more images. Lead with the images. So we, lately, a lot of our work has been image driven and slide decks, less about a printout like narrative. And, and, and maps and infographics and photographs and just big bullet points about what, what you want to achieve. And so far, we haven't had any clients that said, hey, come on, we want a 300 page report. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> uh, I think, and the other good thing about that is that more people will read it if it's more digestible and accessible and you can put it online in a more easily shareable way. Um, so that, that's our approach in terms of the final formatting of, of all these elements. Because it's a lot of information, right? So thanks. Task four, uh, implementation uh, at the end of it. How do you, OK, so the, here's your goals. Here's what you want to achieve. How do you do that? So we will come up with a phased action plan, schedule timeline, who's responsible for what, uh, et cetera. And is it Westboro in which we're working on the implementation plan? Uh, for Burlington. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, often it's a it's a more elaborate process that sort of builds upon the company. <laughs> yes, I don't oh not. <laughs> that is good. Really you nailed it. Time. You nailed it. <laughs> How it ended up at this slide, I don't remember. But we designed that uh, that new. Um, it looks better now, right, than it used to. Yeah. It was. Well, it looks. Yeah, I just I, I recognize the building. Wow, that's not 15 roads going into Yeah, no, the buildings are the same. The road is very different. It was a dangerous intersection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so so we, we came in, you know, we have a great transportation planning and engineering practice at VHB. So we do stuff like this um, and, and came up with this, which I think looks a lot better. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail the No, I'm, I'm glad you recognize it. I, I used to work in Worcester, so I had to drive through there every day. Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, next slide. Oh, yeah, so here's mentioned Palmer. Um, that's, uh, you know, th this was a project that, uh, again, we, you know, it's a very similar process. We took account of what of the planning that they'd done previously, uh, helped them think about local, state, federal dollars, and how they can get plugged into those. Um, a lot of public forums. Um, 
Yes. So that's, I think, what I'd say there. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, town of Westboro, we, we also did a master plan there, which is, has largely been incorporated. Uh, and we've been asked to, to come back to do more work for them in a planning capacity, uh, continuing to help, help them think about strategy. So, so those are the slides. Can I just ask yeah, a couple start. of questions? Who would be our point person? Uh, if we wanted to talk about this, who would we call? I think Julia and I would be sort of together on that. Okay. I'll be the PM. Okay. She should be the deputy PM. Okay. Uh, and any emails you send, you can copy both of us, and, okay. and one of us will get, we'll get back to you. Okay. But we would both be involved the entire time. And then in the background, who's doing the actual work? Oh, it, so it would be a team of, I'd say, five or six people, uh, with Julia and I doing the brunt of the work. Okay. And then other people coming in for, for technical analysis for their specialty areas. Okay. No students, just all employees? Oh, yeah, all full-time okay. employees. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and Donnie and myself are probably the more, the more senior people. Uh, I've, done, I've worked on three or four comprehensive plans. Donnie has worked on more. He's been with BHP for nine or ten years. Uh, and and he, would, he would definitely be involved as well. And he, he was the one who led the, the Palmer Master Plan, for instance. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and I think you've touched on this, but what do, you, what do you see the steering committee's role as specifically? Because we want to recruit really good people for this. Yeah. To do that, we need to give them an idea of what they're signing up for. And we don't know. Right. Right. <laughs> so what do we tell them? What are, what are they signing up for? So I think the steering committee's role is to be a megaphone for the community. Uh, so they have, so I think the more that the steering committee can get out there and speak with people and, and sort of document and understand what, what's on people's minds. Mm -hmm. and, that, and I, I just keep saying people, but it's the people, the school, the businesses, the, every part of the community, right? And if each of them can sort of, if the steering committee can be intentional about how they're dividing that up among themselves, mm -hmm. and then can be a megaphone back to us about what what's on people's minds. To us, that that's going to be a win. It's going to help us to. It's going to make it more efficient. Make sure that things don't fall through the cracks. Okay. Because we will have a lot of touch points with the community, but it, that will help to make it even more elaborate in terms of the fact that we're sort of catching everything that's. Because again, oh yeah, go ahead. I was just going to add to that also, in the end, you want it to be an actionable document that can be taken back to each of the departments and be the tool that's used to implement all the goals that we identify. So to have representatives from different departments within the town and have those perspectives, that's important during the process for making sure it's ultimately going to be useful for right. the government that's yeah. going to be implementing it. Yeah, that's exactly right. They, could, they can check us. If we're coming up with a recommendation that wouldn't fit into your practice, right. they could tell us that sort of keep us in check. Any specific tasks? I mean, I understand megaphone, you know, understanding uh, what the people want, but any oh, specific yeah. tasks that they have to do? I mean, are they going to have to go online and do any research? Are they going to have to collect data? They, you know, anything like that? I think a lot of that, that sort of hardcore number crunching and technical stuff would fall on us. Okay. But I, I think as we got started, you know, each of these processes, we can map out the process, but each one of them sort of has its, its own, own path. its own rhythm and yeah. cadence. <laughs> right, yeah. But I think the steering committee, and it all depends on the steering committee. Right. You know, if they can come up with ideas that we wouldn't have thought of, because we don't understand the, everything about the community context yet, that is really what we'd rely on. We'd rely on them to do stuff that we wouldn't know to do ourselves, because okay. they know the community better. Okay. Than we do. More, uh, team versus oh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they had for uh, we were envisioning having a representative, and I don't recall if you had all Zoom meetings, if you had all in-person meetings, or if you had a hybrid. Um, but we were envisioning having some having somebody from the consultant here for the steering committees to kind of direct them on what they should be doing. Um, yep. So, and this, and well, I think it would depend on how often the steering committee meets right so what will of course be here in person for all of the public events that would that we're facilitating for the steering committee meetings uh, i'd have to look back at our proposal as well but 
I think if it's, for example, if it's hap, hap, well, it also depends on the, the project schedule. Some towns uh, want to do this in 18 months. Others want to do it in 12 months. So I, I think it just, it comes down to a question. You know, we would be here in person if, if we're able to, if the budget allows for it. And, and uh, you know, if the steering committee was meeting every two weeks for 14 months, we might not be able to attend, just to be honest. But if, but if it was every month, maybe for 12 months, or 14 months. That's more, that's, yeah. That's more doable. What's been typical on, on recent plans is monthly, and then with additional meetings as needed, uh, you know, maybe bi-weekly on a case-by-case -case basis, if, if there's a, Yep, exactly right. And so for, if it's every month, I think that that's probably possible, especially if we could um, allow it to piggyback on other events that we're, we're handling, you know, we could schedule on the same date or something. Well, we can work with you to, to, to make it efficient and make it work. I just, uh, Luke, you mentioned uh, in, under implementation, you made a comment about showing how to plug into dollars. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? Sure. So, you know, as a relatively large company, we do a lot of work uh, helping people to apply for grants, state grant, you know, MassWorks grants, uh, grants from the Department of Housing and Community Development, grants from Mass Development, uh, also federal grants like the BUILD grants, stuff like that. Um, we in many cases we work with the state agencies that are that are awarding the grants so we have a pretty good understanding of the uh, of of the sort of landscape of grants and getting access to dollars to do to do work so i, I think that's what i mean by plugging you into the to, or helping you to get plugged into that yep. which is if we you know we do want to keep it high level and conceptual which is what a good comprehensive plan is but we're also going to talk about specific opportunities for investment right like right. infrastructure projects that would benefit yeah. a, a district or things of that nature or a certain underutilized property that might need new life and you might want to apply for an underutilized properties grant for mass development for example yeah. you know like st stuff like that so we in the implementation phase we very much want to think about that how much things cost and who might pay who might pay for them because right. uh, a lot of this stuff doesn't get paid for out of the municipal budget right it gets paid for with grants so uh, the, the state has made great progress in the past few years at consolidating a lot of those grant programs and the community one stop stuff like that, yeah. um, which is good in some ways, but it also means that you got to hit that date of whatever it is, May 5th, or right. if you miss it, yeah. you got to wait another year. Um, so we're cognizant of all that, and, and I think that that's what, it, what I meant by that. So you're an ongoing resource for that type of support, right, as we go out? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Pat or Christina? I'm all set. Um, yeah, PowerPoint help. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to draw on previous. I was involved in the master plan committee uh, or master plan development somewhere else. Um, the consultant of that one, a lot of the committee members felt that the consultant came with their own vision kind of impose that on the committee mm -hmm. um, and so I'm asking everybody how do you, you know how does that play into VHP style of developing a master plan and if there's something that as a planning consultant you feel is um, really what a municipality should do and mm -hmm. the residents aren't agreeing with you I mean how does that how does that work yeah, we've, you know, we're aware of other planning consultants who've run into that. We, we see it all the time. Uh, we, we see, because I think like many professionals, planners, you know, feel a sense of ownership over their discipline or something. So they come, they come in hot and it, and it, and we've, it, it just doesn't seem worth it if you're going to have clients that are unhappy because, you know, people talk and, and what's the point? So we, we just, we really tr try to avoid that. And, and I think that we've done a good job. Um, and I, th I think Palmer was a good example. And I don't know if, if you guys know much about that project, but it, you know, if, if there's people in Palmer we could connect you with and ask them about our approach, uh, it's really ground up uh, and, and, and about listening. 
And there's a whole skill set involved in, in listening, right? right. And, and taking that and turning it into something actionable. So really that's what we see our expertise as, do, as planners is, is simply listening and helping, helping somebody to figure out how to get to, to what they want. Um, we certainly have opinions about housing and economic development and everything else, but, um, but we know when to keep those in check on, on certain assignments that are more about community development and community building. Anything you'd be looking for specifically from us as the planning board? Um, no, I, th I think just to stay in touch with the planning board, and and as as Julia mentioned, you know, sort of let us know nuances about your local decision making that would have an impact on what we're recommending. We want our recommendations to be able to sort of like plug and play, right, to make sense relative to how you do things here. So, I, I think in that sense, the planning board's input would be very helpful. Yeah. Shooting to have somebody from the select committee, someone from the building department, someone from capital planning, someone from conservation, highway, as well as the commission on parks and rec, mm -hmm. and then someone from the planning board, and then a couple at large um, members. Does that kind of fall into line with what you would yeah. expect? That's that's consistent with what uh, we've seen on other steering committees, and um, the process is typically flexible, whereas you get into the process, if there's a perspective that is not at the table that needs to be brought in, there's room to expand depending on the needs, you know, as you get started. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and how many people was that in total? That's and some the, community, you know. And, if, and maybe two or three others. Yeah. That sounds like a good sign. We, we have been involved in comp plans with larger uh, larger groups, which can get tough. To it can get tough, yeah. Can get tough, but yeah. the you know, perspectives are not limited just to who's on the steering right. committee, because exactly. ultimately you have yeah. stakeholder conversations and you can schedule conversations depending on you know the needs, again, as you get started. So you can bring in those perspectives without necessarily needing to grow the committee. Need to have them every, every yeah. Well, an example of that is uh, we, we often do an economic development roundtable discussion, which I think that we had included in our proposal here uh i know we did that in palmer yep. which is okay let's set up a special session with the owners of businesses mm -hmm. and the employers you know uh and and that was super helpful in the in the case of palmer to hear from the owners of businesses and their perspective which differed in many cases to the community and, and the, the town staff uh so the, i i am i imagine we do something similar here That's all we got for questions. I don't know if you guys want to do a quick closing statement or. Um, yeah, thank you so much for, for considering us. I think, uh, you know, we, we we always love getting to know uh, Central Mass more. And by the way, we do have folks in our Springfield office who, now that I'm thinking about it, would probably be plugged into this one. For example, on the transportation uh, element, we, you know, we have a lot of, we have some highway engineers up there who'd probably love to play a role on this. Uh, John Furman among them, uh, who, who is really active in this whole area. Um, but yeah, I close. I don't know. I think it, um, we love doing comprehensive plans, and this one would would be compelling to take on. So we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you very much for coming out. Did you guys come out from Watertown? Uh, yeah. Safe travels. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. You can find grants. You can find grants that pays for itself. I know.
How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm Karen Martin from the Pioneer Dogs Planning Committee. Sure. This one now. Thank you very much. All right, Karen. Thanks for coming out. No problem. Uh, My we've pleasure. We've been uh, basically allowing the consultants to do kind of an opening presentation statement, and then we would ask uh, questions, and then you know some sort of closing statement. Sure, so that sounds good. Floor um, is yours. <laughs> great, excellent. Um, well, thank you again for having uh, me. And again, my name is Karen Martin. I'm a senior planner in the Land Use and Environment Department at Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, I, you know, I'm here on behalf of a few of my colleagues in my department. Um, yeah, so I could just give a brief overview. I don't want to, you know, go over too many things that you've probably heard a lot before. What is a comprehensive plan and those types of things. So I won't dwell too much on those types of things. Um, you know, but obviously, you know, we have a lot of experience doing comprehensive plans. And we recognize that they're a really important document for a community um, to express your goals for your future vision and evolution of the town and creating a series of actions that are going to help you achieve those goals. We feel that the comprehensive plan process is a really unique opportunity for a community to reflect on its collective vision for all of its future built economic, natural, social environments, conservation, development, and those types of things. Um, obviously, a comprehensive plan doesn't actually change your zoning document or your capital improvement plan, but it's a really important tool to inform municipal decisions that you'll be making in the future. Um, uh, according to Massachusetts state statute, we know that there's you know various, I'm sure you've seen the uh, nine or so required pieces of the comprehensive plan at PBPC. We feel that we really have staff experts on all of these areas, whether it's land use, housing, sustainability, um, transportation, circulation, historic preservation. We have over 40 planners on staff, um, and everyone at PVPC is a planner. Um, you know, a lot of other firms I know have civil engineers and uh, environmental scientists and things like that, but we're really focused on planning. So everyone is a planner. Um, and we really have the ability to bring together all of our staff across all of our different departments to focus on these different elements that make up the comprehensive plan. I think a really interesting thing is that in addition to the nine elements that the state does require, um, we have a lot of uh, new uh, topic areas coming into play. And we've seen a lot of communities and we've worked with a lot of communities that are now integrating new elements such as sustainability, climate resilience, food policy and public health. Um, those are really up and coming and really important issues facing the Pioneer Valley today. And so I think that one thing that we can really contribute is that we have planners on staff who've been looking at these things across the Pioneer Valley um, for years now and have best practices in place. And so we can contribute those types of things to your comprehensive plan, which I think really adds something unique um, and kind of sets it apart from other comprehensive or master plans. Um, we have a process. I kind of the big uh, ledger size paper um, is kind of our process, our scope of work, but laid out in a timeline fashion. Um, it's probably very similar to processes that that you've heard. I think you know there's definitely a, a kind of a standard way to go about it, um, and I kind of laid it out there um, from the scope um, that you had. Uh, we're looking for that went over about a year and a half um, worth of process. So you can see, you know, the way to lay out a lot of the different steps, obviously they overlap and take place at the same time. Um, and I think kind of visually, it can be helpful to kind of see how all the steps and pieces of the process interplay um, over the course of the numerous, um, you know, year and a half or 15 months or so. Um, obviously, you know, we would begin with a kickoff. Um, I think I saw that you're forming a committee, a uh, committee that's going to work on the plan. So obviously to get going, we would want to, um, you know, kind of start a kickoff um, with your committee, 
um, establish visions and goals and things like that, get established how the committee wants to set things going forward, how we would meet with the committee, and how we would be involved in getting things off of the ground, set your goals, um, and how we would proceed. Um, we have a really robust uh, set uh, of data. Um, one great thing about, I think, working with PVPC is that we are your regional planning agency. So we are on the ground in the Pioneer Valley. Um, we only work in 43 communities that make up Hampshire and Hampden counties. Um, so that's where we do all of our work and have for 60 plus years. Um, so that means that we have all of that expertise. We have all of that information. We have all of those policies. Um, and we have all of that data. So when we start getting to the point in the process where we uh, need to start uh, collecting data, uh, GIS layers, um, census information, um, zoning information, anything about your community. We really have all of it already um, because we've been doing work in these communities um, you know, for as long as we've been in existence and those are our focus. We actually have something um, out of the PVPC called the Regional, Regional Policy Center. Um, so we have staff that focus their background and expertise is in data um, and information technology um, and analysis and statistics. And they have a repository of all of this data. Um, so instead of having to really start completely from scratch when you know, a firm comes in and starts on your project, we have the ability to kind of be a little bit ahead of the game because we actually have been collecting all of that information and maintain it all um, already. Um, I think again, that kind of just ties into another one of the reasons that I think um, from PVPC, we make a really good consultant on this project. Like I said, we have been working in your communities. Um, we have been working on your projects. I actually have in my bag here, um, we have a library um, in our office of all of the plans that have ever pretty much been completed in all of our communities. Um, so we have them divided out by town. So I have your uh, master plan from 1982 um, and all of your documents. Um, you know, so we really, like I said, we've been doing work in all of these communities. Um, and I know we have worked. We've worked on your zoning in 2000, your open space and recreation plan update in 2017, um, land use and management plan and your master plan many, many years ago. Um, so like I said, we, I think, are able to kind of hit the ground running because this is really what we do. Um, we've been providing services to all of our 43 communities um, all along, and that's our focus. Um, we are local, obviously, so our offices are all in Springfield. Our staff is all nearby. Uh, we have the ability to get here pretty easily. Um, other firms, I know, they're based out of Boston. They're based out of Providence. Um, you know, they have to travel to get here. Um, that makes it, I think, a little bit less flexible. And it just adds costs, honestly, to your project because they have to pay for the time that they're going to spend traveling. We're really not spending any time traveling. We're here. We work in your community. Um, we're kind of right down the road. So I think that's a big advantage. Um, so again, uh, I think I got a little off track with data, but um, we have a really strong uh, history with public and community engagement. Again, that's one of our strong points. All we do um, create throughout our 43 communities is work to get people involved. Um, that's really our mandate from the state um, because we are a quasi-governmental agency is to provide services to help our communities get what they need done and get the public involved. Um, so we have, I think, some really innovative and successful strategies um, that we're working on in other communities. Um, some of the community engagement strategies that we would do would be an online survey. We would get that launched at the beginning of the project. Um, we would do stakeholder interviews with certain identified stakeholders throughout the community. Um, we can do focus groups, um, different breakout type groups on different elements and topic areas of the plan. Um, one thing I think that's really helpful when it comes to a comprehensive plan is some kind of exciting branding or um, like a tagline or something um, if you want it to be like revision Hampton 2040. Um, you know, I think as planners, we definitely understand that comprehensive planning isn't the most exciting topic. I'm not sure people like start jumping um, on their couch about comprehensive planning. And we totally recognize that, you know, we're realistic people. Um, and I think we totally understand. But if there's something that can be done that gets people to think, at least give it a second glance, um, you know, think maybe I can, should attend that meeting. Maybe I will come out and why, and maybe it will be interesting and I'll get my voice heard. So, you know, anything uh, that we can do that involves social media, 
posters, flyers, postcard mailings, anything like that. Um, some communities have had luck with um, doing a photo contest that gets people to come out and gets them excited, something that they can really participate in. And then maybe once they have a little bit of a sense of what a comprehensive plan is, um, and then you know, telling them a lot about it and what it really means. I think the educational piece is important. Um, we would also do numerous, um, we usually uh, count for two. Um, there is some flexibility there, but two um, large scale public workshops, um, one kind of earlier in the process to set visioning and goals, one a bit later in the process at the time when we've kind of set some of the pieces of the plan in action to kind of gauge and see if we're on the right track. Um, and then people can kind of let us know. Um, we can start pretty quickly, like I said, drafting some of the beginning pieces of the plan that involve data um, collection and analysis, kind of what would be the existing conditions portion of the plan. Um, and then we would keep, as we get more feedback, you know, we refine the visions, the uh, goals, strategies, and recommendations section, and kind of keep refining that until everyone feels really comfortable, um, the committee and the public and anyone else who's going to be involved. Um, you know, and then we kind of start getting to the final stages where we're able to really have a draft of an actual plan product. Um, and then again, you know, just make sure everyone's on board. Um, it really all lines up with how, um, you know, all of your board's commissions and people who are involved um, and stakeholders agree um, to get you to the point of the adoption process. So we're very comfortable we can accomplish that um, within this 15 month scope or so. Um, so, you know, I think that kind of covers um, a bit of the background. Um, like I said, we have a lot of experience. We've done many master plans. Um, I think there's a list of our kind of some ongoing or recent, um, recently completed projects um, in our uh, submission. Um, and obviously they're all within the Pioneer Valley. And, you know, I think what that allows us to have is a sense of what are the best practices in this part of Massachusetts. Um, you know, we are implementing these ideas in other towns that are similar to yours. Um, a lot of the communities within the Pioneer Valley share um, similarities, um, conditions um, that are similar. Um, you know, other firms do come from other parts of the state, um, and they may be more focused on um, different areas, but this is what we focus on pretty much every day. Um, and so people in our uh, organization have great uh, ideas and experience with, with implementing policies and land use best practices um, in the conditions that are relevant to Hampton, um, because that's what we are, um, you know, working on in all of our other projects as well. So I think we can really bring that and it's kind of like a more focused area of expertise. Um, and I think that really helps uh, give you a really strong uh, final product for the comp plan. Um. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll start. Um, so who would be our point person for this project? Sure, so it would be somebody within our land use um, and environment department, probably either myself or um, our deputy director. I think his name is the one signed on the submission. His name is Kenneth Comia. Okay. Um, so it would be one of the two of us. Um, the director of our land use and environment department is also Catherine Rattay. Um, she's been at PVPC for about 25 or 26 years. Um, she's a great uh, point person. Um, so it would be somebody within the land use and environment okay, department. And we would have would access be... to, to whoever comes the point person. Um, yes, absolutely. For questions or yes. any issues or yep. whatever. Any open communication. Okay, and who, and who in your firm would be um, working behind the scenes to do all the data collection, all the actual work? Sure. Um, it would be uh, definitely a few of us. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we have people across different departments. We have an economic development department, a community development department, a transportation department, um, and our land use and environment department. Um, and we kind of uh, have people from each of those departments available to help with kind of the element that, you know, okay. they're more of the expert in. Um, so all of those people would be working on the project. Um, the, our land use and environment department kind of tends to head up these plans okay. specifically. Um, so it would probably be me. Um, we have some land use planners um, at different levels of experience. Um, so sometimes people that are a little bit more entry level, like pull data and things like that and kind of get the basis of the plan going. And then people at different higher levels are kind of the ones refining it and helping you really pull it together. Uh, so, so this would be PVPC staff, it wouldn't be farmed out. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we, um, we anything. would not farm out, um, okay. you know, and unless it was predetermined that there would be some type of sub consultant um, for something really, really, really um, specific, um, but as proposed in the plan, 
It is all. We yeah, I, I was involved only. in one previously where they they basically the the UMass. Uh, Oh, they use student, UMass they use students. UMass students. Oh, yeah, no, we don't. We don't have anything like that. Everyone is a full-time PVPC employee that's working on this project. And can you tell us um, what the specific role of the how you envision the specific role of the steering committee? Because we have we are assigning people from certain um, committees within the different board and commissions. But are we being also assigned. want to bring okay. in some people from the community so that the community itself is you know the residents yes. are represented, and we'd like to be able to tell them before they bite off this whatever what, what to expect yeah. <laughs> what it is that they're biting off yeah, yeah i mean like i said i think the steering committee is able to self-direct what they would like their role to be a little bit um usually i would say that um you know we obviously meet with them to begin with and they kind of can help direct us a little bit in really what the town's goals and visions are obviously we can give guidance but we'd really like to hear um kind of from the get-go um what do you really want to see how do you want to you know do you have any main um you know issues, concerns, um, priorities, and goals, and things like that. Um, and then usually the steering committee can meet on a regular basis, and we would determine with them what type of schedule they would like to follow. Um, I mean, I would say if this is a 15-month project, the steering committee would meet at least every other month, um, if not more. It, it definitely could be monthly, um, but again, we you know, want to talk to people about their avail availability and scheduling. Um, so those would be check-in points that we would schedule. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can set up an agenda for each one of those meetings and kind of lay out where we are in the process and how it's moving along. Um, and like I said, I think they serve as kind of a, a checkpoint. Um, you know, how are things going? Um, you know, are we on schedule? Um, have we addressed all of the things that you're concerned about? Um, how would you really like to refine the vision and goals? Um, you know, we can obviously give a lot of background information that helps know what some, you know, good visions and goals are, but you have all the expertise in the community and we're not coming in with um, suggestions necessarily for your community. We want to shape the ideas and suggestions that you have. So like I said, the steering committee can have a regular schedule and it can be set in advance. So obviously everyone knows what to expect um, and they can commit to as much as much or as little time as they would like. Um, then, you know, once we're having those check-in points, with the steering committee other people I think come in in different ways like I said whether it's stakeholder interviews where you know we would rely on the steering committee to give us names of people that are important to talk to uh, we can do focus groups where when we get to each element of the plan there's a housing focus group and you know people can the whole public can definitely be invited or you could target you know specific people who you happen to know are really interested and involved in those specific areas um, so those could be small breakout groups um, and then obviously the largest events are the big community workshops, which are obviously open to everyone. And we really would like to work hard with your community to get the best turnout. You know, I think that's a big struggle um, always um, is turnout um, and getting people to participate. Um, so I think we have some good strategies about how we would do that. So like I said, it can kind of go from like the small to the large, um, but the steering committee is definitely like a key anchor piece, um, but we're open to discussion on kind you, of how they like Do you see like them as function. the liaison between your work and the community? Yes, That's definitely. Okay. And also the rest of, you know, town hall in a way, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. You got anything back? Yeah, just given your history with the community and all the data that you have access to, you know, how do you sort of bridge the gap between that and what is also happening in the town? And what other, what other things do you need to get, say, from the community that you don't already have? Yeah, so I mean, the, the data offers a really good foundation. Um, you know, the beginning of any comp plan is usually a presentation of existing conditions going yeah. through, you know, this is a snapshot of your community today. But obviously, we don't want that to be the bulk of the plan, because that's just facts. And um, it's not actually getting getting you anywhere. Um, but it is important, because you need to know what you have today in order to know where you want to go tomorrow. Um, so I think there's, you know, there's a way to present some information that's interesting. Um, I personally am a fan of really only presenting information if it tells a story or gives you something to jump off of just presenting data for the sake of presenting data so that someone can read tables on a page isn't particularly useful. But if you can take that information and you can shape it into a narrative about what's going on in your community, what the needs are in your community and where you need to take 
the information into action steps, that to me is where, um, you know, the plan actually gets like its, its meat and its, its content. Um, so we can, you know, uh, present data to definitely a certain degree. Um, analyzing the data is important, not just presenting it, but analyzing it. What is it really saying about your community and what it needs? And then so then that really informs the vision mm -hmm. and the goals. Um, so I think that's kind of how they tie together in a successful way. So how do you get that to us if we're sort of, uh, or, uh, you know, we're part of the process or the steering committee? So when you see things in the data that tell a story, you know, how does that cycle back through the process? Yeah, so, I, you know, the steering committee, um, we can put together some presentations after we kind of do the initial data mm -hmm. analysis. We can put it into some type of presentation where we've done this, this synthesis kind of behind the scenes. Um, again, as I said, just presenting you with tables or, right. or even graphs um, to a certain degree only gets only gets you so far. So I think where we do come in um, and are successful is being able to translate the data a bit into yep. kind of needs. Um, sometimes you end up with something called like a needs assessment, um, which has kind of brought you, you know, based on what we see that you have, where, what is it, where are the gaps, where are you lacking, what do you need to do, and where do you need to focus? Um, so like I said, um, some of the steering committees could involve um, PVPC coming and doing a presentation mm -hmm. where we present kind of how we've synthesized some of the information and what we think it tells us and then what right. we think you might want to focus on. Okay. Quick question on the data. You'd, you'd mentioned, and Pat was just asking, you'd mentioned that PVPC has a whole slew of data yes. for the region. Is right. that strictly PVPCs or is, you had mentioned PVPCs at quasi-public Oh, entity. you can find it on our website, actually. Right. Um, like, yeah, we are. I guess we, my question is going to be: uh, Is is that information that only PVPC has, or is that information that any planning consultant would have access to? Um, it's kind of how we've um, taken all kinds of different sources of data and compiled them and have them kind of in our own repository. Right. Um, you know, any. Any firm, anybody can go out and uh, go to the census website. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm only wondering because you said quasi-public, so I'm wondering if the information you have is actually public Oh, yeah, it is. Yep, you okay. can go to our website at pvpc.org. We have a whole section that's this regional data okay. center, and it's yep. a data sharing tool. Just that's trying the to purpose. understand. Yeah, that. no, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's intended for public consumption, and, okay. uh, yeah, that's, you know, definitely our purpose is, uh, you know, part of our mission is to have information and be able to um, get it out to the public. Yep. Yeah, yeah I've, always, I've heard quasi-public. And very yeah. different, <laughs> not just planning, but I never yeah, really understand exactly. what it means. Yeah, <laughs> so like I said, it's, it's, and it's probably not data that, I mean, there are some things that are paid, um, you know, that you have to get data for, but um, I mean, a lot of it is the census. And as I said, of course, anyone can access the census, but we have it refined, um, you yeah. know, for 43 communities, and we have it available yeah. um, in an easy to kind of access format. So I have another question. On, on your uh, timeline here, you have a number of things scheduled or marked up for possibly happening in December. Is that flexible, given the month of December is not very um, open oh, for amenable a lot of people? Too. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we can be very um, flexible, okay. and, and all planners are definitely very familiar with, um, you know, public limitations and constraints around mm -hmm. holidays, the summer. Um, if there's at any point, you know, you don't want to hold a meeting because it's school vacation, it's the summer, um, there's town meeting, um, there's a conflict, um, we'll, right. you know, absolutely okay. be very flexible. Okay. okay. Um, and um, any meetings and your interaction with the steering committee, are those done mostly by Zoom, or is there always somebody present and then some Zoom, or is it all in person? Uh, I would say we're totally flexible. It is 100% what the town is looking for. As I said, I think a you know a advantage is we are physically very nearby, so there's no reason we can't attend any of your meetings in person, which I think is a big plus. Um, but if you want them to be hybrid or Zoom just because of access reasons for the public, um, that's totally fine. We can set them up either way. But there's no reason we can't attend all of your meetings. In person. Okay. I have a couple. I have yep, a couple questions. But anybody, Christine, do you have anything right now, or just do you have yeah. anything in particular that you would need from us as a planning board outside of the steering committee? Sure. Um, I mean, there's things, and maybe you know, I'm sure you could all help us know um, who to go to for different things. I mean, there's always some things that we'd probably like to collect from the town, like a list of your town-owned properties. Um, 
you know, some, uh, you know, a lot of the things are, are out there, and like I said, we have a lot of access to them, but if there's any specific thing that comes from, you know, sometimes we're looking for something from the building department, like their information on how many building permits were issued last year, or different things like that. So sometimes we would turn to the steering committee, or if this is more the appropriate venue because you have maybe more of a connection to those departments. Um, we would probably just give a list, um, you know, looking for in order to collect, you know, to round out our data. We're looking for this, 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 and this, and you know, hopefully we could we could get what we get what we need. But I think that yeah, you know, for the most part, that would probably be what that entails. Um, I was involved in a master plan process once, so I'm drawn back on experiences uh, there, um, and. During that process, it seemed like the consultant came with their vision of what their vision of what, what the town it should be. be. Yeah, um, <laughs> kind of pushing, I guess, policies, certain or items, or certain yeah, yeah. Uh, certain concepts. Um, and there was obviously a lot of resistance. So there was wasn't necessarily the the steering committees. Um, the steering committee and the consultant didn't necessarily kinda, agree. Yeah, so how do you yeah. feel that relationship works and, you know, whose perspective uh, is is paramount? I yeah, guess. how do you how do you weigh it? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's very important. Um, I think as planners, it's our absolute job to be able to know what our appropriate role is and what the community's role is. I mean, you know, at PVPC, we would absolutely say, you know, we're, we're, we're here for guidance. Um, we have, you know, expert knowledge in the field of planning, um, but that doesn't at all mean we're coming into your community with preconceived notions. What we absolutely do have are best practices, um, policies, and like I said, we do have a lot of experience um, with things that have been successful in the Pioneer Valley specifically. So I think we would love to share ideas about things that could work, um, but I don't think we would ever say that they're prescriptively, um, you know, being um, pushed on you or they have to be in the plan or like the plan is pre-drafted in any way. Um, we're just here to offer guidance and facilitation um, and we want all the ideas to come from you. Um, like I said, we can definitely present um, this was successful in this community. Um, here's a potential idea. Sometimes something that we can offer is kind of like a menu of options is what we call it. You know, we can say here's 20 potential strategies to address climate change and sustainability. Um, but it's completely up to the community to determine what direction they want to go in. Um, you know, obviously we uh, are providing a service and it is, you know, guidance and information um, and facilitation uh, and leadership on the process. Um, but we want all of the ideas to come from within the community because it's really your plan. We're just kind of compiling it um, and doing a little bit of the polishing. Um, but we absolutely want to hear all of the ideas. Um, sometimes I think there's a bit of an education component that comes into play. Um, we would like to tell people what some of the options are. You know, sometimes it is hard for members of the public, lay people, to like come up with planning concepts because they don't know what 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 are they you know where where are they getting them from um so it can be i think helpful one thing you know i've definitely experienced is if you can give a presentation and include um you know like i said really an educational component you know if we're talking about housing and you'd like to increase the amount of affordable housing well there are strategies to do that people probably don't know what they are um you know not everyone is familiar with concepts like inclusionary zoning or things like that um so you sometimes have to explain what they are so that people can make a decision about whether they want to see it in their community it's hard to know what what you want in your community if you don't know what you what yeah. what the options are um, so I think that's where we definitely come in we can show and tell people um, and give them some information so that they can kind of in, in an informed way um, make some opinions um, and uh, participate in the engagement sessions and tell us the direction that they'd want things to go in but we're just kind of sitting at the top level um, overseeing it um, and helping the process along I, I don't have anything else either. Um, thanks for coming in. I don't know if you want to do a, a closing statement or. Yeah, just thank you again for for coming in. Um, I know you know you have multiple uh, uh, submissions, but as I said, I think our strength lies in the fact that um, we've been working in these communities for a very long time. Like I said, all of our staff, we're just planners. So every aspect of every project that we do is just helping a community in our region get the services and access that we need. 
Um, you know, we, like I said, we're quasi-governmental. We can do things like help you with grant and funding opportunities, and I think some things that other private firms can't necessarily offer. Um, like I said, I think our strength lies in our familiarity um, and the fact that um, we're really here to serve you um, because we are a public agency and um, this is what we do. So um, we would really, you know, love the opportunity to work with your community. We've loved the processes that we are currently undertaking and have undertaken in other communities and I think they've all been really happy with the product that we've gotten. Um, we're, you know, even though we are quasi-governmental, we're always trying to, you know, advance and strive to, you know, do a little bit more and a little bit more in terms of, you know, the enhancement and, you know, the visualization and the GIS and really sharpening the plans um, and getting you a great project. And we are very flexible. Um, you know, obviously what we presented you um, is just one option of how the project can play out um, based on our experience, but things can be swapped in and out. The timing is flexible, um, you know, in terms of the budget, if there's anything really special that you'd like to see because you really think it's a focus for Hamden, you know, just let us know um, and we can definitely, um, you know, try our best to fit it in and discuss how we can make it happen. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much. It was right. great okay. to meet you and thank talk you. to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, yeah, if there's any questions that you have, anything else we can uh, send. Yeah, I'm sure we'll um, yeah, my email and then my the deputy director can I think I put them on the last the, page yep. of the PowerPoint. I'm Slides. sure we'll probably okay. be reaching out for. Yep. Um, at least I'll I'll probably be reaching out to folks to look for contacts on where they've. Yeah, he and I. Where, yeah, you can email the two of us. We're we're okay. the best two contacts okay. moving forward. So okay. excellent. Sounds good. Thank right. you so much. All right. Thank Enjoy you very the much. rest of your evening. Yep. Thank you. Too. Appreciate it. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. So we didn't do terribly. No, we did pretty good. You want 15 minutes over? Yeah. Five minutes. Of, five minutes an applicant. It's not bad. Well, not really, because that was five minutes late too. So. <laughs> Is Maddie on? I don't see her on. I thought Maddie was coming on. Okay. All right. Yeah, she knows. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, I don't think she wants to be involved. Right. In, right. In the selection process at all. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. There is one question, Maddie. If the planning board can choose to um, pick a vendor tonight. We do have a meeting on 322, so how do you guys, well, we do have a public hearing on 329 of the following week, and then oh, so two we weeks is gotcha. um, our normal fourth meeting. So. Well, one of the things about picking a vendor, though, is that uh, I, I two would. of the three cost more than that we have in grant money, and do we know where that other pocket of money would come from. We would have to, we would have, no, we don't. We would have to go to, uh, we'd have There's to go to There's a warrant article on the town meeting. Yeah. Okay, so would we, are we still free at this point to pick a vendor? I think we're, I think Ignoring we're, the price, or yeah, not ignoring it, but you know. I got no, I have no problem with discussing interviews today, um, but the interviews have brought me to a place where I want to call references. Yeah. Call a friend? Yeah, I want to phone a friend. friend. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I just, um, I, I really think it's it's worth reaching out to sure. some of the other towns, especially yeah. um, especially Palmer. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I don't think we'd be doing our due diligence if we, we didn't. Did. Right. Right. Um, and that's so I, I have no problem discussing the interviews and, you know, what I liked. But I would like to reach out to references. I'm sure there's some references presented, but we may have to get actual contact names of, of people to uh, to reach out to. But I, I certainly want to follow up with that. And what else do we have on the schedule for the 322 meeting? Well, nothing because we're we're not sitting at the sign bylaw. Right. And the apartment bylaw, we can't 
really talk about that in detail public hearing. Can't change the tax. We can't change what was submitted to the town clerk into a public hearing. So we've a, we've actually submitted that. That is true. The legal notice goes out. That document is what goes to the public. The, the document that we've been working on, but we haven't talked about correct that document. So what I talked to Rosemary at the town council today. She said the document that was given is the document that would be provided to residents if they come in and want to view it. At our open meeting, we get residents input and then we can close the public hearing. We can open a regular meeting and discuss the changes the board wants to make, assuming they're not major changes to the, to the language. Bylaw. Yeah. You know, little typos and changes and section references and that type of stuff. They're not major changes. Or we're not going to rewrite the whole thing that we presented. At the, we're not going to change the, the substance hearing. of it. Right. 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 But you, at the public, why do you have to close the public hearing to make changes? You can do it. You can open the public. You can do it either way. There's two ways, Rose said. You can open the public, get the residents input, yeah, close right. the public hearing with the residents, and then open a regular meeting for the board to provide their input with the residents' why, input. Why it's would all on wanna, how you want to do it. Yeah, well, the, that's the thing, is I think you want the public hearing. I mean, there's a difference between a public hearing and public comment. A public yeah. hearing is for the residents have their voice heard, heard right. um, but if we close the public hearing, I don't. We can't change any of the language in the law because well, they would yes. have. They would be entitled then, to have another hearing have, on that, right? So, yeah, right. Because <laughs> yeah. so I think I mean, we, we have if to we be, change well, the language, the board can uh, make recommendations to make some gonna, of make changes to it, but not major substance. Outside of the public hearing, you can't, right. right? So why would we close no, the public yes, you hearing? Can. Yes, you can. Not major changes. So just like so rewording. Right. Well, let, let, or the, one of the things that I put in there as a suggestion was that we include grandchildren, niece and nephew. Right. Now let's say that we in, we that's there. We go to the public hearing. But, but that's not in the no, that. that's not in the notification though. It's not. No, because what no. What, ha, what what was in the notification? I, I'm confused then. So when we when we put a when we put an advertisement in there, when we put an advertisement, we've in the already paper, put an advertisement. Oh, yeah, okay. we had to in order okay. to have All the right. public I didn't, hearing. I, I didn't right. realize so that. The permit for the bylaw is not in the. So it's the draft. Right. It's the draft bylaw. Anything that you email to Joanne, right. as far as is not. Then what's the point? Of because you need to have. I mean, of us making suge further suggestions, if that's. That's what's in the. So that's what's in the. That's you, that's what you can't change until you that's have the public hearing. Until you have the public hearing. So at the public hearing, you can you can make revisions to the bylaw. Okay. What I'm saying is. Okay. If we're gonna, there are there's numerous opinions on changes to that bylaw. That needs to be done. Those changes need to be done during the public during hearing. During the public hearing, yeah, right. We, yes. can't, we, we can't have a meeting afterwards you and can, then make it. Yes, you can. Yes, you yeah. can. She told me you can, but you're not going to rewrite the bylaw. Right. We would make those substantive changes, changes during the public hearing, and then we would close it and say, oh, hey, could we reword this, or here's we'd a like grammatical to, we'd error. We'd like to possibly include this word. Or but why, would you, why wouldn't you just leave the public hearing you, open? You can. You can do it right. both ways. So if you okay. close it's the public how hearing. You do the, the notices of it. Right. That's what it comes down to. So, so my, if you close the public hearing and people don't have the opportunity to comment well, they will. on they sit through the open meeting. If you close the public hearing, the public does not have, the public hearing is for the public to voice their concerns. Yeah. If you change who is eligible to live in accessory apartment after you close the public hearing and I'm in the public, and I don't want nieces or nephews. Right. I'm going to be beyond PO'd right. that you did not let me comment right. on the fact right. that those changes, changes would happen during change. so the we'll, public hearing. So we should not. My thought is we should not close the public hearing until we have the final text of the law. That's fine. You can do it yeah. either way. Because yeah. all we're yeah. doing is right. is potentially that, that seems to be the only fair way to do right. it. Right. She's right. assuming also that yeah. the board has reviewed this accessory bylaw beforehand and we had changes incorporated in it. It's not. It's a vanilla 
bylaw that we got. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We right. did not have the opportunity. Right. And we're kind of trying to we're jam it into a small time period here. This, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. So, so we don't need to meet on the 22nd for that purpose. No. The only thing we would need to meet on the 22nd about would be to vote on this. Right. And what, why can't we have just a, an hour during. meeting and just dive right into that? Be done. I'm fine with that. And we could, and instead of doing the minutes of the meetings, we could do those that day too, seeing as it's already almost eight o'clock. And aim for a one-hour meeting. I, I'm I'm all for that. Yeah. that's what I was thinking. Was, I mean, was Maddie looking to not have a no, meeting on the 22nd for a particular reason? No, not no? at all. Okay. She said there was she had an agenda lined out for the next couple meetings. Okay. Since we're not doing the signed bylaw and we can't discuss the second part, if you made a decision tonight, she said there wouldn't be a need to. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I agree with Jason that I think we should contact some people, some towns that have used these companies yeah. and get some live it's feedback. Right now, yeah. Fairly challenged. Yeah. Now, who would do that? Is that going to be Maddie who it, does that? I think each, each, I think each one of us could do one. Honestly, or, I think we should all just reach out to whoever you want to reach out okay. to because we're all going to have, okay. we're all going to have our own opinions, yeah. right? So. I think we all and should we be able to hear and then right. come back. All right. Do we have to follow a process to identify these people and contact them? Is there any no, I think formal you're doing process that as your or own, we're just doing as your as own call member, them up? Member of the planning board. I'm a member as an I have some okay. questions. I'm hoping you can help me out. Right. Uh, okay. With your experience. But hopefully we decisions. two of us don't call the same that's people. What I was just gonna say. That's the only thing. Well that's Kind of a burden on them, maybe. What if I, I have different questions than you? That's true. Well, that's why I was thinking <laughs> that maybe we should do it together or something. But anyway, okay. But if we do it together, now we're having a public meeting. Right. Well, just right. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of just like a couple of us do this thing. What What does John want? Well, a couple of comments quickly on uh, Jason's point about the public hearing and stuff. Keep in mind, the town meeting is also a public hearing. Many times in the past, we've offered amendments to zoning bylaws proposed. It's all about, and I think that's what Joanne was saying in her conversation with Rose, you're not deviating from the intent of the bylaw you're presenting. You're making minor modifications. And I think Jason's point is that you need to do that in a public setting, which is offering the amendment at the town meeting. Or as Jason said, fine, we'll keep the meeting open, town meeting. Okay. you know, your public hearing, you could do it there or a town meeting. That's been done plenty of times in the past. I think, Heather, what you're talking about, adding a couple of blood relatives doesn't take away from any intent of it. It's just, oh my gosh, I forgot about grandchildren or something like that. You know, I think you, I think you both are on the right track there. Okay. But keep in mind, the town meeting is a public meeting, right. allowing many people to offer amendments, as long as it doesn't take away from the posted you know, all of a sudden you couldn't like, oh, we can now be a rental thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody said rental. You couldn't do that. Right. Right. Okay. And I go back to your, when you're saying, could more than one person call them? Of course you can. You're just gathering information. It's not a quorum okay. violation at all. Okay. And I think you said, you're right. Well, I might have a different question. Of course, call. I mean, those, <laughs> those people are getting paid to answer your questions. So. <laughs> okay. You people aren't. You people aren't. Thank you for doing this. No, okay. seriously. Okay. So great meeting tonight. Boy, that la that last lady, she must have some great espresso or something. Yeah. My God. I mean, well, if you hired her, the master plan would be done in two months. That's all I can say. <laughs> very energetic. Yeah. yeah. Very articulate. Yeah, yeah. she's very um, okay. enthusiastic. Yep. That was okay. what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Okay. So well, we're saving the minutes. I may not be here on three twenty-two, but it's only minutes, and you guys discuss any of your paperwork. Right, Actually, and it'll be on Zoom. You're not I got a be question hearing. for John if okay. he's still out there. John, can you still hear us? You betcha. Um, so you're not opposed to, to an amendment on the floor at town meeting. I I always historically tried to. We try to limit it, but I mean that's your. I mean we don't have any huge things that are that I think are going to draw the crowd out, but you never know. Right. It could be the fence at the cemetery again. You know, it's, yeah. it's a, maybe I'll put a leash law at the end and that'll keep everybody there. 
No dogs on Raymond Drive. Um, <laughs> um, no, I mean, well, and, and, this is and, the and, ultimate opportunity for people who didn't go to your public hearing to, to hear about it. And then the, uh, the, the other had a question on the funding. Um, right, that's on the warrant. Okay, so we have so, so are we basically, are we basically, we go through and pick somebody and then try to sell it at town meeting? I think so. And then you you might issue them a contract contingent on funding or something like that. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Okay. Right. Contingent on funding. Okay. Because we only right. have one, we only have one consultant that meets. Inside your target. Yeah. That right. meets the, mm -hmm. the budget, the, the grant. Budget. I mean, well, you don't know. I mean, Bob is the ultimate grantmeister. He might come up with something else. He seems to find money everywhere. And we're actually going to the Outlook dinner uh, luncheon on Friday. And so he'll see all his buddies at the state office and like, hey, come on, Joey, give me 25,000. Bobby, give me 50. You know, yeah. <laughs> he's, in, he's incredible. He's incredible. You know, okay. so it could be. Yeah. So that person okay. did also one person referenced Mass Works. I hadn't thought about that, but those grants are out there. You know, Jason, you've seen those used in yep. other towns. Yep. Yep. So, and we haven't taken one yet. So we should be at the top of the pecking order for that. Because yep. those are the ones they try not to double up on communities. Yep. So if you're looking for a place that hasn't got one, we should qualify high. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, John. Thank All right. You. Uh, we haven't closed. We haven't adjourned the meeting yet. No, not yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think we're all, are we all thinking March 22nd for making a decision in between yeah, now and, and then? Yeah, and just can, make it brief, you yeah. know? No, no opportunity to add anything else, just discussion of. <laughs> Let some disaster arise. Discuss minutes, <laughs> minutes, and this. Yeah. There's no such thing as disasters. <laughs> okay. And as far as reaching out, East as far as reaching out <laughs> to people, as far as how do we. Some of these decks they have all the information is in these decks people to talk to. I don't know. Uh, no, so it's gonna. I think most of them listed who they had worked for or what towns they had conducted yeah, yeah, master yeah, plans they did. for. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think we would just email. Um, there should be contact information. If not, Joanne should have okay. contact info. But um, I, I would think that we reach out to consultant A and say. Hey, I'd like to know who your contact or who your uh, reference was at the town of Palmer. Oh, so that's was what it. I was asking. Do, yeah. How do you do it? Do you go? That's do what you I would do. I would, the, I would reach out the firm to them yeah, and ask and them say, for the contact yeah, information. Who okay, is your, who that's is your what contact I would. As opposed to calling the Palmer planning right, board and right, saying, "Hey, exactly. who can I talk to?" Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. what I would do. Is Thank who you. is because you know the I don't know the town administrator. Not that's a poor example. I was going to say maybe the planning board secretary might be over at the building department right. now. Yeah, or, right. You know, okay. And that's the person that knows right. okay. who was on the board and yeah. that kind of okay. stuff. Okay. All right. That sounds good. That's what so, I would do. So, so uh, just so I'm clear, so we'll working from these documents, we would we would uh, reach out to, to the people we who we to interviewed the today. And yes. Say, yeah. hey, who's your contact Can at you the town of Palmer? Some right. contact information for yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want me to shoot out to all of you the email addresses for the uh, which individuals that came tonight? Yeah, that would be great. If you want to, that would be great. Yeah, they, they if, if you don't mind. You yeah, that would be helpful. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. And then, as far as meetings, so the twenty second is a meeting. Yeah. The twenty ninth. Twenty ninth and the and the eighth. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Well, if we don't have anything else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.